However, he's at 6, he dies next turn even to Ayo. And now, Wedding Announcement will draw us a card, which will heal us. And I think that should be enough to survive this. Hello everyone, it's Slav here and today we have very very interesting Esper, the Esper of many options. And with this Esper you are definitely more aggressive than with the usual one. It's it's not control, it's midrange. However, it's pretty interesting midrange because you have a lot of flesh creatures, you have planewalkers, you have Ayo, the star of the deck. And honestly, in this deck, this card really shines. Like this definitely is the main card for the deck. So if you like dragons, if you wanted to use them since half a year, now is your chance. <laughs> and as you can see, Ayo has the ability that it can bring a permanent card with total mana value four or less from among the cards like top seven in your library. And you put it on the battlefield when this dies. So it's really good against any kind of sweepers. And you might see some common thoughts uh, in the deck. All the others cards in the deck are four mana or less. You can basically bring any single card. So uh, we also have Sarah Paragon with very similar effect. Uh, it only misses the Emperors and Sheldred and the rest of the deck is basically fetchable by all of them. Of course they need to be permanent so things like make disappear in Inferno Grasp don't count but the deck doesn't need it. So uh, this is one of the reasons also that Evolve Sleeper, the card that you you know my opinion on this, it's it's interesting, it's it's nice, but I'm never very sure if it's worth the slot. However, in this deck it is. Why? Because we have so many effects that benefit from this being a one drop. So it's ba basically like a one drop that has more power than the one drop, but you can still fetch it as a one drop. And it's extremely important, you can even go with Ayo. It, you, you can put any number of permanents that aren't lands, of course. So, for example, we have so many tree drops, you can go Wedding Announcement and Sleeper after they sweep. That's insane. You can even pump it the next turn or at the end step even, if you are smart and pre like predict the uh, sweeper. So this is actually a really good card. And the fact that you can get back uh, with Sarah Paragon, so you have five mana open, you cast this and you want some immediate value. You don't have lands into the grave in your graveyard. So you just get a Vol Sleeper and you already got two for one at the worst case. So that's why this card made into the deck, uh, into this deck at least. So uh, we have some interesting cards. So let's start with the new ones, probably. Resolute Reinforcements. Really good card. I have to say, it, I see it more and more and more in like top decks and this is for a reason it really synergizes very well with a lot of cards the prime being raffin and wedding announcement because raffin of course benefits from the more like creatures that you are that are attacking and this being one one when they attack they can be one of them can be three three so you basically can get like four mana value out of two mana play so that's why it's so good and you also get to connive so you even curate your hand in a way so, uh, of course, Rafin main part of the deck as well, because we have so many ways to create small little annoying creatures, and the more, the merrier, as Rafin said, because he's scheming and he's a seer. Uh, extremely strong card, especially if you combine it with Sarah Paragon, because like it's really hard to answer this. When they finally do, you can always just answer Sarah Paragon. There's high chance they, at this point, don't have enough removal, because they used it on Rafin, on the tokens, maybe even Liliana or Kaito, and you just get it back. So Sarah Paragon, we don't have a lot of them, like only two, because they are a bit clunky and they need to, like, they need to survive. So you need to force your opponent to use removal otherwise. And they're more of a like late game six or seven drop basically. So we don't need too many of them. However, don't get f this for you. This is integral part of the deck. This is one of the most important card. And of course, wedding announcement, as you guys in the comments noticed lately, yeah, this is incredibly strong card, <laughs> easy as this. And what makes it even better is, do you know what the best deck like with highest win ratio is right now? Yeah, mono black with Liliana. And as you can see, minus two is target player sacrifices a creature. It doesn't matter what creature it is. So 
For example, Rafin is much weaker because it is answered on curve by Liliana. It just is a minus two and you are still left with dealing with Planewalker. So that's why answers and like swarming opponent with small little annoying creatures is so important. Like add to this equation resolute reinforcements. Suddenly you play this at dance step and you have already two tokens. You play Rafin, you attack, you have three three token and one one token and Rafin. Now they play Liliana into this mess. It's horrible. You sacrifice them a 1-1 one, one token and you are left with 3-3 three, three and Rafin. And they lose Liliana. Suddenly the game completely shifts. And this is one of the reasons like all the wedding announcement, all the resolute reinforcements are so good right now. Because of mono black and how dominating it is. So with that being said, we have of course some classics. Wandering Emperor, you need this card. This is one of the best closers, best uh, removal, like it's best everything. That's why, you know, I don't know how much it costs in paper version, but it's some ridiculous amounts, like I think between 60 and 80 dollars, like <laughs> it tells a lot how good card must be. And of course we have some parts of Mono Black Lillian of the Veil. It's basically a removal, but don't forget, first of all, you can empty your hand very easily. Second, you get the value from things like Sarah Paragon, Ayo. So in a way, you don't need cards in your hand to, you know, have power in the hand. And with Rafin, you can always like get one card that you need every turn, play it, and then minus Liliana. And the minus two for removing creatures is extremely useful against like Trespassers, Shardred, like things like this, especially that you have some parts of control. You have cut downs, you have uh, stroke and make disappear, you have infernal grasp and even one mid hook just to wrap it up. But um, like in this case, you can control how many creatures come into the board. It's hard sometimes, but you can definitely do it. So you need to manipulate the board so that Liliana is good uh, when you play her. You generally want to hit uh, like Shardet or something like this when they are completely tapped out. So they start their turn in the same position they did last turn, but you have Liliana on top of the what was there. And pressure of discarding cards is insanely important, even for this deck as well. So we also have Shardet. Uh, if you have this combo of Rafin drawing like five cards <laughs> and Shardet uh, giving you 10 life for this, you will probably not lose to any kind of aggro ever. You will also probably punish your opponent very quickly because like Rafin is something that needs to go. Kaito and Liliana are also very annoying, but when they finally deal with your 3-drop, then comes the 4-drop, <laughs> so it's even worse. Like, nearly each of your creatures and planewalkers needs to go or he loses the game, and Ayo is just this glue that gives you this endgame. And don't forget, when you are in an aggro spot, kinda, because you are playing, for example, against like heavy control style, when they are tapped out and you know the sweeper is coming, don't be afraid to play this. It's worth it. The four mana after the sweeper is good enough to war warrant the, the spot and playing this card uh, into the sweeper even. And don't forget, you might hit something like Emperor. So then you get a Planewalker, then you make a token, then you plus the token or make another one. And your opponent just swept and you end up with already board ready to fight. So that's insane. And this will win you a lot of, ga of games. So. For the win rate junkies, uh, we didn't play a lot of games, but we won like 70% of them. So, you know, seems pretty good so far. But the deck, I, I would rather, I think it's something like 60% to be honest. It's it's really strong. It's definitely a, one of the top decks. Uh, however, it's not like completely dominating. You might get mana screwed, you might get different parts of the deck. You definitely want to be on the play with very aggressive start with like, a wedding announcement, resolute enforcement, and Rafin or Shardet or something like this. But a very strong deck in Diamond, it will probably get you to Mythic if you play it enough. So, with that being said, as always, subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate all the subscriptions, guys. You are great. I really am happy that the channel is growing. Thank you. Thank you, really. And uh, if you enjoy the decks, if you subscribe, you get daily content and daily cool decks. So why not? Why not, right? And with that being said, I thank you for attention. That was great. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the intro and let's go into the games. All right, that's a, that's a really good start. I wonder whether we should play the Bangbuster 
or we should wait with the counter spell. Let's see what the colors our opponent is playing. I'm not sure about this play, to be honest. Briaros, bro, w wake up. <laughs> we need it for the viewer. Okay, and now we know basically everything. Okay, that definitely helped in a, in a wrong way. <laughs> so, Bangbuster, you are not for this matchup. Sorry, bro. So the reason we are holding counter spell is that this definitely asks for the creature this turn, especially one with the haste, and that's pretty perfect for make this appear because you want to get rid of this card. Like if you can make efficient trade, that's more than perfect, more than perfect. So do we go for the Liliana? They have a lot of haste creatures. I think for the future turn, like we actually need uh, a lot of black because we will double spell, we will infernal grasp and cut down. We are guaranteed to have the cut down target because Kumano will transform. Then we go with the infernal grasp. If that's not a haste creature, we might go with Liliana, I guess. If his draw is not perfect, oh boy, he's in for a ride. That's a cut down, bro. However, he has more cards than we do, so we still need to play carefully. Peacekeeper. Spells your Oaken. Okay, so, basically, he will choose Liliana, right? I wonder, can we, like, make any play to capitalize on it? I think Liliana might be our, like, way to win this game. Like, if we plus one, we can pressure them pretty hard. It will be hard. Oh, because as it comes into battlefield, that's nice. That's nice. Huh. So he pretty much forced our hand. That's interesting. That would suggest that he has some haste creature. Huh. Next turn we can we could empty our hand. That's a pretty pretty big deal. What is their next turn? Probably Raiju, right? And they really don't want... Yeah, so I think it's still Bangbuster. We can empty our hand in multiple ways. In the worst case, we can just discard to Liliana. But I think it's, she's a really important card. That's our last remover right now. And this is something that prevent, prevents them from playing Raiju. Or not. <laughs> Like, I guess they just smirk anyway. But that's good, that's good. It would, this would suggest they have more than one. If they are so wasteful, it means that they just want to turn it into like fireball. A better fireball, because they deal four. Oh, oh, those are really good cards. I like having my good cards. So, uh, we will actually do it like this. Uh, the reason is, Liliana is a lot of pressure. They need to answer her next turn, so this will mess their turn. And when they do, we still get to draw a card. That's pretty much a perfect curve. We maximize the mana, and Emperor is more devastating than Liliana. Okay, that's not scary at all. You love to see it. Kumano. Kumano is annoying. It's not the most strong card or as someone could say strongest but that's that's good answer to Riviana that's fair however we draw cards and next turn we can start having Bankbuster as a as a dude basically uh, I think this is AO time something big will come into battlefield uh, maybe we should also go for the Emperor I will actually think about it for a second because like, they are incentivized to play, like, Raiju, and then it will be, what, 3-3, three, 4-4 three, four, four as it comes into battlefield, and 5-5 five, five during the attack, leveling initiate as well. 5-5. Five, five. Then we can just trade with Ayo. Uh, yeah, because Kumano won't be there yet. And whatever happens to this, uh, we can always get the Bindbuster. We are playing Crafting Tower because Takenuma is actually a bit more, uh, a bit stronger. Uh, like, when we can get back the AO, like, I know Kumano exiles it, but only from the next turn onwards. And right now he cannot really attack. Oh, Adeline is a big issue, because she doesn't tap during the attack, so Emperor is not a removal. 
2 emperors is still not a removal. However, we can start pressuring them with Ao. That's a big deal. Okay, let's start with attack. I think they will go with the Emperor because they know Kumano exiles it and prevents the full effect from the Ao. And honestly, uh, I love this, but I think it's it's not good enough. I think it's too slow, and Liliana is not worth it. Ao will get exiled, so that was only the turn, uh, the play if he plays Raiju last turn and he didn't so this line is out of the window and we are making the new one with drawing cards and playing emperors we have a little bit maybe too much mana but i think we can use it pretty well oh but it's still exiled you'll have to see it okay let's see the attack oh oh he will get busted he doesn't know. Oh, right. It's Vigilance. It's Vigilance. But we can still go for the first strike. Like, we are getting a lot of damage on the face. Now, oh, how do we do it? Can we risk it? If we play the Emperor, we go here, we give first strike. This dies. We get hit for 6-7. With 2 mana, he cannot kill us. So first, let's play like this and see if uh, all the triggers go through. Okay, no instance on his part, that's good. And remember, we can minus two uh, Emperor later. So we are getting a lot of value right now. I wish I could use the Bang Buster. Maybe I should make a token and trade. I don't think that's a great idea. And we still heal with the Emperor, we activate the Bang Buster. I think we are on to winning this game right now. It's really tricky though. Like, it's close. Alright, so let's make the minus two. He will probably uh, do it again on Kumano, just to make a huge dude. So we need to be prepared for blocking. I wish this stopped. <laughs> it unfortunately does not. I think we cycle. I want to see my options. I want to see what's up. Huh, we lack one mana to do it all. Okay, we are definitely, definitely attacking with the Ale. Kumano is a problem. I think we might uh, make a token and try to backbuster and token. Or just uh, absorb all the damage, I guess. And then when he's out of vigilance, we just use the Emperor. We can also go for the first strike, but it will be indestructible. That's a big issue. Like we are most like we don't have exile effects right now that uh, hit vigilance targets. He needs to be careful though. If he plays it, it's his only play, and it's just six damage. It's not the end of the world. Problem is that Kumano uh, is the thing that he pumps, so Ao cannot trade with the graveyard ability. Alright, let's see the attackers. He doesn't have red mana, that's important. Oh, and he went for the Emperor. This is really good. Can we win? It's 10 damage. 12 damage. Yeah, we won the game. That's not a correct choice, my friend. Oh, right, it's a lifelink. But we can prevent it completely. Oh, that's so great. So... This is how we play it out. We do the blocks. Now, before the damage, we cast the Emperor. We basically kill our Emperor. No lifelink for you, my friend. Now we make a Samurai. I guess he can block one of the creatures. So maybe that's not as great, but he, he has nothing on the board anyway. And he's out of the things that he likes. All right, so... Yeah, I guess he can block even on the ground, so that's a problem. We can push 9 damage. 11 with Shouldred. But that's still quite a lot of damage. And with Wedding Announcement we can push even more. I think we just go for the huge AO. We can trade it the worst case, I think. 
And yeah, I, I miscalculated last turn because I forgot Kumano will also be able to block. But it shouldn't change situation too much. Maybe we draw with two, uh, just to get some life gain. So I will attack with this and this pilots. I guess this is more efficient in stats actually. Because it's basically a 4-4. Four, four. Yep, that's a good block. However, he's at 6. He dies next turn even to AO. And now, Wedding Announcement will draw us a card, which will heal us. And I think that should be enough to survive this. If I attacked with everything, no, he would block a higher priority target, so it wouldn't change anything. Adeline, I don't think she's good enough. Okay. Do we care? I don't think we do. I don't think we do. We probably should ca cast cast down in response, but I don't think it will matter. He will just die to the... Yeah, he stopped out. Okay, that's game. Oh, that was actually so close. Like, what? what is the point here? <laughs> what is the point here, honestly? Uh, let's just get rid of this crap. Yeah, we got two extra damage. We didn't need to, but we are at seven, so it doesn't matter. He creates a dude, and we will block a dude. And then we attack with everything, and he's out of options. Yeah. Wow, that was that was interesting game. I probably should have played some things better, but it was fair. It was good enough. Okay, that's kind of decent. Like, it's not perfect. Nothing is on curve. But we have some early gameplays. We have cut down. We have some mid game. So, we know, we have options. We definitely have some options. Not the best ones, but it, it will do. Oh, and we are... What was this? Uh, either Azorius Konai Virtuoso deck. Or this instant sorcery thing. Okay, let's play like this. This is very hard to counter, and with mono blue, of it might be like CGB mono blue tempo as well. I actually didn't meet this deck so far, I think. They didn't watch the video, but I think that's what it might be. I know the title, okay? I know the title. And definitely it's, it fits something that wants to cast a lot of instant. Though it considers don't get any discount from Jin. Alright. Hmm. What they have? They definitely have some bounce effects, right? It's a tempo deck. We aren't guaranteed to make any place in the next turn, so I will play like this. Yeah, because after we play this and he stopped out, he we cannot follow with anything. So that's not really a great way to do things. And we are not paying completely... Uh, we, we are not tapping out just to deal this one damage. Because of this. Exactly. Like, this is what they do. And we do not cast the inner reinforcements, we don't need to discard right now. Uh, because we want to uh, go heavy on the on the pressure next turn, so he needs to tap out. I think we should draw land, if not, at least we can play the sleeper. So, like, we have some place and we are already falling a little bit behind in tempo, because of the lands and draws. Like, we are only remover right now. Yeah, okay, it's, it's pretty fun. Fine. Let's attack. I think he shouldn't do anything. We need to slow roll this one. A Vault Sweeper is enough pressure to, like, force some reaction. And we need to play with our Sleeper. Oh, okay. That's a hard one. That's a hard one. Good call, though. Because we have nothing except the removals, we cannot really do much. It might also be some Mono Blue Control deck. But I, I didn't see it so far, so I'm not sure what to expect. So far, let's just keep attacking for two. At some point, 
at some point he will need to cast this fighting hope and tap for one <laughs> we are definitely not casting stuff into open mana impulse okay so i'm not sure impulse is still really good with Jin. i don't know if that's like, more aggressive like so far it, he plays completely like control but yeah exactly it's usually still not We cannot cut it down. Infernal Grasp is inf extremely important here. So I think we need to bait the Emperor, unfortunately, which would be an amazing card on its own. But I think we need to bait with the Emperor, hoping he doesn't have double counter spell. He shouldn't counter it. Like, it's a painful decision to, <laughs> to let the Wandering Emperor, and we'll make a lot of Samurais, but he probably should go for it. Okay. That's a problem. So that's a one mana counter spell. It means that he, he might have another one. He cannot pay, of course. That's painful. I'm pretty sure he has something on top of this. Oh, March. That's, that's a good call. Kinda. Kinda good call. All right. But he's completely tapped out, and this means that we can play our threat, which is actually perfect against the gene. So we will see. Consider. Oh, someone got into panic mode. Oh, someone got into panic mode. Problem is that all of his like draw is one mana, and yeah, it seems to be. I don't know what the deck is, but it fits exactly what the title said. So I think that's his deck. All right, all right. So how do we do it? He definitely has something. I don't know what he has. It might be some kind of phase out effect. Fading hope would be pretty good. So I think we attack first. With everything. Um, do we go before blockers? What is his play? Fading Hope would probably be done right now, right? This is last chance to do, do something before the blocks. Okay, it pains me. But if he has a, a phase out effect, it means he cannot block. So that's why we do it before. Yeah, Hard Negate, that's definitely a good card. Uh, Okay, and he wants to kill us. That's interesting. We will draw a card, but we have no answers. We are tapped out. I don't think he can deal 20 damage. The problem is that he can do it during two turns. So he can just Fading Hope AO. And that's, that's basically it. Okay, you got it, bro. Like, if that's the case, we are getting a lot of value, and he needs to answer it. Uh, we are getting this. Sarah Paragon is pretty good. I like Sarah Paragon. It's something that needs to go. And we have another one after he removes this one, and we have another AO. Okay. This cannot be countered. That's really important. And this is this has flash, right? So we can play it any moment. I will actually attack with only this. Because I want more pressure on the board, so I want the token from wedding announcement. Unfortunately he might take this. That's that's a bit painful. Oh nice. You need to phase him out, bro. And he couldn't. Good. Good, 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 good. So no damage, but next turn is a bit better. And now we can <laughs> use a gadget. <laughs> that's pretty funny, but that's not a good play. We can only cast one spell. During each of your turns, Sloth, you are making fun of people not reading cards. You are one of them. And that is definitely true. I don't read my cards. And I got punished for it. Oh man, I got so punished for it. 
However, we can still win this. Ayo. I think we cast Ayo this turn. It means that we need to play Caves of Corios. Whatever you call it. Then play Evolve Sleeper. So this is our thing. Uh, if we don't attack with Serra Paragon this turn, Wedding Announcement will make it for attack, so it trades with Jin, and that's pretty good. So we need to go. If he has made this appear, it sucks. But he doesn't. And you love to see it. We could attack with everything, he trades with the best one, and then we deal two damage. I don't think it's worth it. Mono Blue has no sweepers. That's one of the problems, like, you can go white because they have nothing that answers it. Uh, against, like, uh, Azorius, you cannot go like this because they just sweep, I guess, with Ayo, but they just fade, uh, farewell you and you have nothing and you lose the game. Against Monoblue, not the case. Okay, so the hand is not extremely explosive, but being on the play, it's actually okay. On the draw, I would be much more hesitant to take it. Do we think about cycling crafting tower? I think with 5 mana play we shouldn't, so I will play it as the first land because this ensures that all the rest will go on curve. Like if I didn't have Ayo and Wandering Temper I would think twice about this one. That's actually a very good draw. Yeah, this, this is actually a good draw. Uh, next time we are forced for wedding announcement. Yep. And I guess, yeah, we will have to pay life, I guess, if we want to get Rafin. But maybe Wedding Announcement, like this is guaranteed to go through narrowly, only Spell Pierce would counter it. And Cut Down is not a good target. They couldn't cut down the Rafin because of the ward, but they could do it next turn. And we are pretty much left with nothing, we need to tap out again, it's, it's not great. Wedding Announcement is just this mess that you need. Against control, the fact that you force them to play first, like during their main phase, is a really big deal. Like this is how you win games, basically. Alright, so we can go for Rafin or the Emperor, which will make everything super awkward for him. What are they car their cards? Like they also have like wedding announcement, Emperors, things like this. I still think we main face the Emperor, even if they have any kind of sweeper, they cannot go for well yet. So I think it will make everything much more messy for them. And it's much easier to... it's much harder to kill the uh, Planewalker than to counter it. Hmm. Infernal Grasp won't cut it, right? And usually Planewalker removal is very expensive and we are getting Anthem in two turns so then we can hold up the counter spell. Yeah, if they if they use full turn to answer the Emperor we just keep the board because the board will kill him in few turns so we just hold up the counter spell and then play A after we counter something. Yeah, if, if that's the place that he needs to do it's it's generally good for us. It's still good for him as well. So I guess it's not as good for us, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, I like seeing less cards on the enemy side. And removing one samurai token, like they they could return the plane walker. Honestly, bouncing emperor would be better, I think, unless they have no sweeper. If they are play, playing correctly, it means they have no sweeper, but they might draw it still. So let's not get excited. Okay, okay. Okay, we have definitely a lot of plays. If they don't have a sweeper, which we hope for. This is probably some kind of counter spell, but we will still cast a spell. And we have counter spell, so that's a pretty big deal. If they didn't kill Emperor during their turn, they probably won't do it during our turn before activating anything. Okay, how do we play this? Farewell is their best option, but we can counter it. If we bait it very well, that might be actually really good. I think we just want to... Like, if they go card for card against Samurai, we need to maximize it. Man, Midhook Massacre is actually a pretty good card. Here. Like, it's basically 4 damage already. Hmm. 
What do we discard? It's not perfect. It's either this or one meat hook massacre. Let's do it like this. We get to draw a card at then step. And we get the anthem from the next turn. So this is turn when he needs to react somehow. Huh. That's interesting. It all depends whether he has a follow up. If he has like sweeper, like farewell. I guess farewell does not remove the emperor, but then we are at minus one. I guess we can play Ao. If he doesn't have another farewell, we are in good shape. If he doesn't have farewell or any sweeper, countering this will probably win the game. Midhook won't do it. Oh, it can do it if he has the untapped land. I think that we should actually let it through. He blocks one. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. Let, let, let's just test him. Do you have a follow-up or was this the main play? Because I'm honestly not sure. I think that's probably like in high mythic that would be a very big mistake, I think, what I've done. Because good player wouldn't play it into the counter spell, most likely, unless he's forced. It's hard choice. I, I really don't know what was the best play here. He seems to be the digging. But farewell. The only reason I went with farewell plan is that it doesn't remove planewalker, so we are still kind of ahead on the board. Oh, you love to see it. Oh, that's so good. So basically, he had nothing, and in the end, I made a good call. Not me bragging, but I really wasn't sure. But I'm glad it it paid out. Oh boy, <laughs> that was so scary. So, uh, I guess we attack with everything. We connive on the hardest creature to kill, which is definitely Rafina, especially that we have multiples. Uh, Liliana is really good here. Man, I want meat hook so much. Uh, yeah, I think it's cut down. Oh, we need to go for four. That's a lot of cards. <laughs> uh, we want to play meat hook. And Liliana. Man, it's it feels horrible to discard wedding announcement, but I honestly think this is the play. And we are dealing much more damage as well. Oh, oh, that's scary. If he blocks like this, that would suggest like sweeper next turn? But he didn't have one. I think he should double block this one. Hmm, that definitely suggests a sweeper. Uh, it should be depopulated then, right? Ayo will make it awkward, right? Because then we get new board. And Midhook Massacre will do it, make it awkward as well. Yeah. Oh boy, yeah, I know, I'm thinking a lot. I, it's just hard. It's just for damage, I guess. It's not the... like, he's not at lethal point yet. So let's just slam Ayo. I think it's enough pain that if he has a sweep, I guess Farewell answers it. Okay, that was a mistake. I should have fought longer. Yeah, Farewell will completely destroy us. Please don't have Farewell. I was a good control player. Okay, this is not control, but I, I was a good control player. I, I don't want to get farewelled. If he had it, I think that would be a that would be a no-brainer because we are tapped out. Oh, he doesn't. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kuma, you are the bro. <laughs> I would get so wrecked by farewell right now. Like that would actually completely shut us down. What sh I should have done is probably play Liliana, right? But I just didn't want to discard anything myself. That's why I didn't play it. I guess discarding Midhook was kind of play. But we seem to be in luck. Our opponent did not draw any kind of sweepers. Unless he doesn't play them, but he should. Okay, that's really good. So we nearly kill him or we do kill him. Uh, let's go for... Ayo now, so both creatures are incredibly hard to kill. Uh, make disappear is amazing, so we keep it. Make disappear is amazing, we keep it. Liliana is not needed. I think we'll play like this. 
I might miss Leafa, but with all the counter spells that wouldn't matter. I wanted to mid hook at dance, so we can deal up to two damage extra and then keep up the counter spell. Man, uh, that was really hard game. I know I fought long, but it, so many weird decisions. I think I could play it be better anyway. All right, so our opponent goes first. Our hand is extremely slow. However, it has three legendaries, or actually three mythics. So, yeah, we have so many rare. Oh my god, we actually have only rares and mythics. Oh, it, it's hard to be budget gamer, I guess. I can feel the pain. Uh, so, our start is definitely not explosive at all. Uh, so, we need to hope that we outvalue our opponent in time. Actually, let's play like this. I will make a stop just to pretend the counter spell. Like when you have literally nothing, it's worth to do it, to be honest. Smart players will play also at the second uh, combat phase uh, or the main phase, but usually that's not the case. All right, so let's play like this. Okay, which is more annoying to deal with? I think Raffin. Uh, we have double Raffin. Oh, they have literally nothing. No counter spells, no removals. That's perfect. No march, no infernal grasp. Okay. It might be a mirror actually. This is pretty interesting. So it's like mirror, but we are getting the first initiative. I kind of think I like shorted so much here. But we are having initiative, so we should probably start attacking first. We can draw cards faster than he can. And we can ramp faster than he can. So why not do it? What is this madness? Are you freaking serious? Oh my god. Okay, that completely changed the situation. I did not expect spell pierce. I know some versions play it. I've seen them, uh, but I didn't think it's one of those that I met. Uh, however, we can kill Kaito next turn, so he needs some answer. Uh, what do they play? They definitely play like cut downs, but Rafina is out of cut down. Yeah, I think they play two Infernal Grasp if I remember. Oh boy. Okay, this definitely went a bit different than we hoped for. I think it might be time for Ayo. Tenacious Underdog. He's definitely going hard, as he should. Shorted is also kinda cute play. He wants to draw cards, right? Problem is he might have another removal. Uh, but okay, like this definitely punishes him, him for any card draw, and he wants to draw a lot of cards very quickly. He's out of one Inferno Grasp. If he plays two, there's not biggest chance he will draw another one very quickly. And he might even think twice about drawing cards. I don't think he will, but you know, it definitely pressures him in a good way. And if this survives, that's completely like game changer. Okay, let's see. No removal so far. You'll have to see it. And we are getting healed. As we should. We deserve getting healed. Okay, so Tenacious Underdog is much worse when, uh, you know, when you basically need to pay your HP. <laughs> there is a, like, argument to just attack face here. We will play the AO. But you know what, still, uh, he doesn't have answer, let's not give him the chance to get answer. And, like, it's enough HP, like, if, if he's at 5, of course, of course. Oh man, so annoying, but yeah, definitely insane, good draw. So, let's go into plan B. Ayo, the creature that does not tap, ever. Maybe I shouldn't attack with shoulder, I guess. Oh, hardcore, hardcore. Okay, we'll definitely play Rafin, but the problem is we aren't guaranteed to draw anything that is not a land. And I know my draws, so I'm a bit scared. Because if we don't if we attack and don't draw, 
Oh, never mind. But as you can see, lands from the top. Oh boy. Let's go for Rafin. At least we can try it, right? And we need to go face right now. Otherwise we don't force block and we need to do it like this. Just to try it. It also makes sure that Lisa is out of the game, which is kinda helpful. Oh, never mind. Forgot she also exiles. That's really bad. <laughs> That's really bad. Uh, I'm not playing lands because of Rafin, of course. Man, the spell pierce. The spell pierce. And my bad colon shall that, I guess. Yeah, like... I probably shouldn't attack into open mana, that's my bad. That's like Emperor is the most played card one right now. If you have white, you, it means you play the Emperor. And this version definitely wants Emperor a lot because that's one of the key cards. So if he doesn't have like direct removal, he should play some kind of like Emperor effect, right? That, that would make sense. I don't think we can bounce out from this. Like he's having a lot of stuff, so I will just check this draw. As always, <laughs> I told you, I know my draws. When you are Rafin, don't expect anything other than Lance. Lance, Lance, and Lance, and some more Lance. <laughs> okay, but still that was lost because of my mistakes, I think. We had better situation than our opponent, we just messed it up.